Hello everyone, my name is Paul Stetrick. I'm with Nepsi, Northeast Power Systems, Inc. I'm happy today to announce that we are just received our first VD4CS. That's right, it's a vacuum switch uh, designed for capacitor switching. Uh, this is using uh, uh, synchronous closing technology using servo motors. Uh, so this is a alternate technology to the Southern States cap switcher here, which we've been using for many years now. This is a 600 amp rated device and uh, it uses resistors, pre-insertion resistors. So in other words, what happens is the resistors get switched in first, those resistors put an initial pre-charge on the capacitors, and then those resistors are bypassed. So this is considered a semi-transient free switch. Of course, there is a transient when, when uh, the switch initially closes in with the resistor, and then once the resistor is bypassed, there is still another small transient that exists after that. This switch as a whole is a very good switch. It's outdoor rated. It's a SF6 rated switch. It's almost a de facto standard when you think about capacitor switching in the renewables industry. The switch is 200 kb BIL, and uh, it has a weight of 475 pounds. But we take this switch and we insert it into our equipment. Uh, we have the bus connections up here on top. There's actually, it comes with the bus connections on both sides here, but we take one off here and we drop it down below. The resistor and the SF6 gas and the interruption takes place between the ingoing and outgoing terminals here. So without uh, further ado, we will talk about this new switch here. And this is an alternate technology. And what makes this important is that up until today, this was almost the only switch that we could purchase uh, for capacitor switching in the renewable substations, especially when it came to large capacitor banks uh, involving multiple stages. We've been using a standard VD4 switch in our, in our capacitor banks uh, for many years now, a VD4 uh, switch that's got a capacitor switching rating, a C2 rating, but generally we can only get to about five megavars, and after that we need to use transient interrupt reactors to mitigate transients and those reactors get too big, and it forces us into using this technology. Nothing wrong with this technology. One of the biggest items is lead time. It's been lead time for many years. One of the problems with this technology is it re requires that the resistor within uh, the Southern States cap switcher be sized according to the megavar rating of, of the capacitor bank. And because you don't often know that capacitor bank rating until very late in the project, the switch can't be ordered. So oftentimes the capacitor bank becomes a critical item in the project timeline for completion. So this is a device, it's a vacuum switch. It's actually a vacuum breaker. It's uh, based upon their arc furnace breaker technology. So I'm just gonna go through some ratings on the switch itself. Uh, so it's a 38 kb rated device. It's 185 kb BIL. Again, the Southern States cap switcher is 200. Um, it's got a withstand voltage of 95, which is actually higher than the Southern States cap switcher of 80, just to compare these two switches. It's got a 1200 amp rating, a 1200 amp capacitor switch rating as compared to 600. Now, in most cases, 600 amps is more than adequate. This switch is 1200 amps, which means it could switch over 50 megavars. When you come right down to it, that's a lot of megavars. Uh, a key difference between the Southern States cap switcher and this VD4CS is is this short circuit interrupting capacity. This is actually a breaker. So it can it's designed to break 31.5 kA of short circuit current. So what that means to you as a renewables developer is that if you have a feeder breaker supplying your capacitor banks, you can eliminate that feeder breaker because in a sense, you're gonna extend that collector bus into the capacitor bank where we have a continuous bus bar within the enclosure and you would then interrupt any kind of faults within the equipment with this device here. So that could be anywhere between 30 and say $50,000 just from a cost standpoint. And then of course you have uh, the installation and commissioning of that breaker. It's got a weight of 507 pounds. Uh, so it's a relatively heavy device. Uh, when you um, think about trying to exchange, take it out, you need to have space in front of the enclosure to pull it out. Uh, it has a 20,000 mechanical endurance rating to it, which is a significant number of, of, of operations. You compare that to the 10,000 with the Southern States cap switcher. From an electrical standpoint, uh, this switch has been tested to 10,000 operations at 1200 amps with a prospective transient inrush current of 25 kA 
at 4.25 kilohertz. So a phenomenal rating. And it's an electrical test. It, it was not a mechanical endurance test only. The ABB had took the test to 10,000 operations with that perspective current of 25 kA and 4,250 hertz. So that's a, that's a, big, a big plus for this switch. It, it carries a five-year, 10,000 operation warranty. And again, that's very significant. And the switch itself is backed by ABB's uh, service, which is worldwide. So it's great in that respect. In terms of cost, they're relatively the same. Uh, from our standpoint, our enclosures are designed to accept both of these switching devices. In fact, if you have a metal closed system and it's using a switch and you need to pull it out and replace it, we can replace it with this switch uh, and so vice versa for that matter. The, um, this kind of pop around the equipment here. It comes with this umbilical cord here. It's a pretty high quality umbilical cord. This umbilical cord, one end would, would, would connect to our equipment. The other end connects to the breaker itself here. And you can kind of see here, you plug it in here. So the change out of this system is very simple. Very simple to change out. Some other things to note about this switch. It has two trip coils. We at NEPSI, we typically use one for protection one for control. One of the issues we've had with the Southern States cap switcher is sometimes the customer wants two trip coils and it's hard to get the two trip coils. It's got a ready or a self-check diagnostic system within the switch itself. So during operation or when the system is actually not running, this, this breaker is still doing a self-check. It's confirming that it's ready for operation. And this is a big plus for a switch that sometimes may not be used uh, often from time to time. It's got a block close uh, interlock, we find that block closed interlock to be convenient for a key interlocking the capacitor bank. If it's uh, block closed, it will not close. It's also got an under voltage release coil. We use that for loss of DC. We have a loss of the DC control voltage in the control and protection system. Uh, it will automatically trip off. But we also use it sometimes for loss of AC. We'll, we'll set up the control circuit so that it accepts both a loss of DC and also a loss of AC. And then uh, other things are watchdog contacts for the CPU. This has got an internal CPU, and uh, it's got 4A and 4B contacts. And uh, so just coming around here, let's turn on the back side. Here are the terminals. You can see we have incoming and outgoing terminals. It does not make a difference which, which terminal you are connected to. This is a vacuum, a vacuum breaker, a vacuum switch. The vacuum bottle exists in this area. Um, it uses a voltage sensor to sense phase A voltage and is doing synchronous closing. It's using servo motors within this device. And it's got special contacts within the, within the pole area here for capacitor switching. So the, the servo motors uh, allow for a very precise closing operation of the vacuum switch so that you prevent pre-strike and then also re-strike on opening. If you have a lead time issue, uh, for your information, we stock these uh, vacuum switches here uh, at our factory here in Queensbury, New York. ABB has also committed to providing these with also a short lead time. Okay, so we have one more uh, switching technology that we would like to show you from ABB, and that's over here. This is a seven megavar shunt reactor bank. And inside this, we're using an ABB HD4 SF6 breaker. So this is going to renewables plant for shunt reactor compensation. It's an SF6 breaker. Uh, normally, you would use uh, another switch uh, from Southern States, an RL switcher, another outdoor rated SF6 switch for reactor switching. In this case, we're using an HD4 SF6 breaker. Uh, SF6 is a, is a type of interruption process for which uh, it reduces reignition or the possibility of reignition. Uh, in addition to that, we actually insert an RC snubber network into this, into this system uh, so that the RC snubber even further reduces the possibility of reignition. So this is a 1200 amp rated switch. We've been doing this for quite some time. On this side here, you have a shunt reactor bank, and that's seven megabars. It's an oil-filled shunt reactor bank. 
Uh, and again, this is very compact. If you have seen an open air solution using air core reactors, it would be massive in size. We were able to do this in less than 15 feet, the whole thing. And there is no magnetic field outside of the iron core reactor, so it's a big plus. Uh, so anyways, thank you for uh, listening to this video. Please contact uh, NEPSI if you've got any questions regarding shunt reactor banks or uh, capacitor banks uh, involving this VD4CF switch, maybe B. Thanks.